All right, here's a part two of your Excel assignment, uh, number two on sales forecasting. So it's going to back, I'm going to back up just a little bit and, you know, talk you through this again. You know, when you look at your round zero fast track report, you can see that you sold, you know, 1,200 units in total. And everybody sold the same amount because everybody had one sixth of the market, uh, the low tech market. You know, you had one six, which is 16.667%. So you had 840 units that you sold in the low tech market of your product able. And then the high tech market, you know, you had one six of the high tech market, 16.667%. And you sold 360 units into the high tech market for a total of 1,200 units. Um, what I typically ask students is I say, okay, going into round one, so now going into round one, well, how many units would you sell if you maintained your current market share of 16.667%? In fact, I probably should scroll down here, 16.667. If you maintain the exact same market share, how many units would you sell? Because we know that the high tech's growing by 21% and the low tech's growing by 9.6%. How many would you sell? Actually, this is a round zero pass track report, so it's a little different than the assignment. So I'm going to go back to the assignment here. Um, let's see here. That's not what I wanted. Um, ooh, let's see if I can find the assignment now. So going back to the assignment here, you know, we've got these hypothetical growth rates. So in this scenario that I gave you for the assignment, if the low tech market grows by 9.6% and the high tech market grows by 20% and you maintain your current market share, like nobody came out with new products, nobody changed anything and you were getting one sixth of this, one sixth for that. How many units would that be? And that's where you can go into this template and say, okay, if I maintain my current market share, you know, it's going by, so we know that round zero is that much, and that's how much we sold in round zero. In round one, if we maintain our current market share, here would be the number of units sold in the low tech, number of units sold in the high tech. And I'm going to add um, actually one more column over here. I'm going to call this total. And um, it's actually going to go, you know, I'll just do it like this. So I can do total here, and I'm actually going to just paste the formatting right there. So that's that. And then um, I'm going to undo this bowl. I'm going to make it bold all the way over here. And I'm going to do it like this all the way down to some small borders. I should have done the bold, big bold first. Let's see here. Yep, I'll just do. Uh, let's see here. Um, format cells on the border. I don't want anything on that side like that. Okay, so I can see that in total for going into round zero, round zero that was the total number of customers round zero. I'm just gonna copy this down now right here. That's the total number of customers in round one, and my sales forecast would be 1,353, which is higher than the 1,200 up here. So this would help me forecast that nothing changed for round one, what would be my total sales forecast. I'm also going to back up a little bit and run this formula one more time. You know, we know that the growth rate for this is that number times that number is the number of new units. But I just want the new market size, so I'm going to say, okay, it's that number times 1 plus the rate, and it gives me a growth rate number of that. So now I can see the total number of units, and that would be my potential sales forecast. And maybe I'm going to come out with ACE. Suppose I'm going to come out with ACE, and it's only going to be the high-tech market, um, and it's only going to be halfway through the year. Now, if there's six markets, six products, and uh, even Steven, we shared it, you know, I'd be 16.67%, but it's gonna go to, actually, let me copy that down. It's only gonna come out halfway through the year, so maybe I get 8%. And then this formula, let me show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm actually gonna anchor this. I'm gonna hit, uh, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, you can type in the dollar signs right here to anchor it. And then when I copy it down, it still stays with this number and it's anchored to that. Or you can come in here and you can actually hit toggle with the F4 key. But I'm just going to anchor right here and I'm going to copy this down, copy that down, copy that down. And this is going to be 8%, that'll be 0. And so now I've got pretty much all of that anchored down. That looks good. I'm going to anchor this one down. 
set f4 on that. And maybe Ace will get like 1% of low tech. Ooh, that is a, let's see what's going on here. That wasn't the right. Oh yeah, not, not 100. Here, one, let me copy this down so that I get my formatting down right. Zero here. Okay, so now I have a template set up to where if I decide to just type in a, a number, uh, an estimated market share, I'll be able to come up with an actual sales forecast. I'm going to copy that down, copy that down. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. And then copy this as a bold outline. And there's just something I need to format on that cell there. So that one needs to be like just a single line on that side. Okay, so now I've got an idea of what I would do for, and I'm going to just make this uh, total here, it's centered, like that, copy that down here. So now there's my total sales forecast. Now I've done all that for round one, now I'm going to go ahead and do it for round two. I'm just going to copy this down here, you hit control V to paste it, and I start having to do edits. So this is round two, and then I start checking my numbers where they're coming from. I'm going to shrink this a little bit. So you can see when I hit F2, it says, okay, it's coming from that. Yep, that's right. But this isn't right because it's going too far down. I'm going to have to reference that right there. That's my growth rate for round two. And so I did that. I'm just going to copy it over that way. Hit F2 here, and I can see how that one copies okay. Now I can see going into round two, that looks right. That looks right. So total customers in round two is 9,204,000. Nine uh, and I'm going to make this a little different. I'll just do it in round units. There we go. Okay, so now if I maintain my market share in Able, that would be the market share. But maybe I think Able is going to be a better low-tech product and not as good of a high-tech product. And that's my new sales forecast going in for round two. And Ace, you know, they're going to really dominate in the high-tech right there. And they get me get a, you know zero in low-tech. And it gives me a good sales forecast for Ace in round two. And now I'm going to do the same thing for round three. So I copy this down here, paste it for round three. And then I have to start making edits and say, okay, did that copy? Yep, it did exactly right because I was only going one row down, so that one's right. But this is way off, so I'm going to have to come back up here and say, no, that's not the right number. Actually, I'm just going to hit what the right number should be. Going into round three is 9.3%. And then I just paste it over here, 21.5%. Now I've got a total, I know in round three, the total number of customers is going to be 10,438,000. Maybe able because the competition's growing. I'm only getting 18% of low tech. Maybe I get 2% of high tech. And now I have a revised sales forecast for able. Maybe I'm getting 8% here. I come out in 2% here because I'm starting to drift into low tech. And maybe I get arrow coming out at 8%. And so I can now forecast for these products for round three. So this is just a simple uh, sales forecast template. I use these hypothetical growth rates. Here's my round zero table that I can, you know, I don't need to use because that's what happened. But for round one, I can play around with some of these numbers and say, hey, I'm going to make this a little bit better in low tech, a little bit less in high tech. And it gives me an, an estimated sales forecast number that I can use as a benchmark. It tries to put the science, you know, the actual or potential market share behind these numbers um, to make our estimate. So hopefully that helps. Um, so that's my round one, round two, and round three. You need to develop this template for all eight rounds and for hypothetically three products, and then take the quiz, and it'll ask you certain things like if you change your market share to say 15% here and 5% here, what's your total sales forecast? And you look for that number there to answer on the quiz. Hopefully that helps, and good luck.